We're going to go ahead, though, and, and, and get started. And I want to welcome you to our Smart Women event. i uh, like to recognize uh, Lee Ellen Smith, who is with us. She's on our advisory board. Catherine is a part of our advisory board. So those are the two advisory board members that are here tonight. Uh, also, we have John Fry with us uh, again tonight. John was here at lunch today. It was so good the first time. See, so look what, what you are in for, just a great experience. And so John is with White & Associates, so if you want to buy a home, you're also going to need uh, homeowner's insurance and, and other uh, coverages that go along with purchasing a home. And then we've, Sonia is here with us with our mortgage department, so uh, she'll be talking about uh, the topic tonight about purchasing your, your first-time home. Uh, we're just pleased that you chose to spend uh, this time with us. Uh, we are here with smart women to improve your knowledge on buying a home or maybe even refinancing. Uh, I am totally aware, the group, the bank, is aware that you are exposed to a lot of information online. And our purpose is to, to provide this information to you and not just to give you information, but also hopefully to provide a hands-on experience throughout that process of buying a home and so that we can lead and guide you through. We can serve as that resource to you uh, in purchasing, refinancing, buying a lot. Maybe even we talked at lunch today about your credit score, uh, how to improve your credit score if that needs improving. Uh, and or how to maintain your credit score. So there's a lot that goes into the mortgage uh, loan that uh, Sonia will be touching on. Our mortgage experts are, 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 are Sonia, Rhonda Heathcott. Uh, we've just got many of them, probably four or five, and we've got one in every market that we serve. So, so we've got the resources uh, to help. But speaking of resources, I would be very remiss if I didn't tell you about a resource that you can access at any time, day or night, 24-7, and that is our Smart Women website. There is Smart Women, and you have the Bonsai for Smart Kids out on our website, and there are links on that website that can take you to educational programs to help your children learn to save. Uh, that is in 83 school systems across the state of Tennessee now, uh, but I, I ask you to share it with your own families and let them know that on the Smart Women website that children within their families, it starts at sixth grade up in the school system, so we know that it is written at a sixth grade level and they can begin to learn how to save and maybe they'll be in a class to purchase their home one day, but they'll already be well ahead in having that down payment saved and understanding the savings account and other financial balance in a checkbook and those types of things. So it's really great information on the Bonsai Smart Kids website as well. And then on the Smart Women, we have a blog. We will be blogging about Smart Women events as, as we uh, offer these events, but we also have experts that will blog on our website about other financial topics. There's been a, a number of financial topics that women have told us that they would like to learn more about. And so we're going to have experts blog. And on that blog, you can read about financial information that might be of interest to you. So the experts, the bankers, and we also will probably have customers that will share their own blogs out there about their experiences within smart women and how they've learned uh, from the programs that we're offering. So, Go to the website, learn about the Smart Women programs. If you have a friend that didn't get to make it or a family member tonight, then they can go out to the Smart Women website and they can hit the link on the first time home buyer uh, tonight's topic and they can get information that will be posted out on that website at a later time. We have a videographer who will be posting the video and that's probably why I'm nervous because he's videoing me. Um, <laughs> But I'm not really nervous, I'm kidding. So, uh, but to have that information out there so that you can go and ex uh, have access to that 24-7 uh, is, we think, is really good across the state and to be able to push this information out electronically as well as in the classroom. In our commitment to you as women, and, and I will tell you, First Citizens National Bank is committed to the education of women. 
We're committed to the education of women across the state of Tennessee. We've offered, I don't know exactly how many sessions, but we've offered, this is probably four or five sessions that we've offered here in a partnership with, uh, with libraries, and we partnered with the libraries across the state. We use the library as a venue because to all of us, a library means education. It's a place to come and to learn and to gain knowledge. Catherine is, we partnered with her. She's the director of the library here. We have enjoyed our partnership with the library, um, particularly here in Dyersburg. Uh, every event that we've hosted here has just been so well done. Uh, we've got such a great venue here uh, for these types of events. Always well attended and Catherine participates and provides great information for you to be able to take with you as a part uh, of your handouts and be able to access information and learn more about the subject that, that we're actually presenting. So, so thank you so much. Also, I want to thank Lily McCall. I don't know if y'all picked up a card or not, but Lily McCall is 11 year old at Fifth Consolidated School. She made the cupcakes. That is her, that is her business. She's an entrepreneur and it's called Blessed with Sweets. And her card says John 13, 34, as I have loved you, love one another. And I just think that is the sweetest card. Uh, I haven't met Lily, but I would just be fascinated to meet Lily and to meet an entrepreneur in the fifth grade that can cook divine cupcakes because they're absolutely divine. I want to introduce to you uh, Sonia with First Citizens National Bank. And she has been with us, what'd you say today? 28 years. 28 years. Mm -hmm. Sonia is the expert. She's, she's over our mortgage division in terms of our, our, our mortgage originators. And she does a really good job for First Citizens National Bank. So I agree, give her a hand. Thank you. Thank you. Sonia. Thank you. Thank you, Judy. Well, how many first time home buyers do we have here tonight? Wow, yay, thank you so much for being here. I hope that this will be very encouraging and some information for y'all. I said this this morning, John, I'm sorry you're gonna to have to hear the same information again. I'm so glad you're here. 28 years ago, I was fortunate to come to work for First Citizens, 28 years ago. 27 years ago, I was a single mother of one daughter and purchased a home on my own. I had mortgage experience and I knew the right questions to ask back then, okay, because that's what I did. I was in the mortgage business. Saying all of that, please be sure that you work with a knowledgeable, experienced mortgage specialist that has your best interest at heart. And we want to be real smart with our finances as women and men. So this is our mortgage team locally. Uh, Tara Matheny was here at lunch today, Tammy Ladd. And then Edith Dunavant, Edith travels to about four different uh, counties for First Citizens. So this is what we're gonna be covering this evening. What is your first step? A list of what is helpful at application, your different programs available, credit scores and how they affect your financing, down payment and no down payment programs, assets, savings and checking accounts, how they can benefit you, no new debt during your application process and why that is important job time and debt ratios. So where do we start, y'all? Being pre-qualified is the most essential to, to buying a home. The first place a home buyer should start. You select a bank or a mortgage company. The lender will pre-qualify you based on your income and credit. The lender will also discuss with you how much house you can afford. The lender should also go over with you different mortgage program options, which we're gonna cover tonight. So what items are helpful for my mortgage pre-qualification? So we're gonna need information such as where you have lived for the past two years, including landlord information, where you have worked for the past two years, including addresses and phone numbers, most recent two months pay stubs, most recent two months bank statements, including all pages. So if it says one of 10, we actually need all pages. So Sonia, mm -hmm. what if I don't have a bank account? What if I don't have a bank statement? What if I use a green card or a some like, other like form? a debit card? Yeah, and not some an other form statement. of payment, but mm -hmm. I don't really have a bank account. Okay, uh, it's going to be hard to verify cash. 
So my advice would be to probably open up a checking account or a savings account. It's, it, underwriters have a really hard time verifying cash. I mean, we can't do that. Cash, a lot of people will stick that cash under a pillow and there's, there's ways to get around not having your cash, which would be like gift funds and we'd have to get into that. I'd have to talk to you about that because wherever the money comes from, from a down payment or closing cost has to be verified, has to be sourced out. We have to know where the money comes from. Today, there are so many individuals, particularly if, if, if I'm a millennial mm -hmm. or in that Gen mm -hmm. X generation, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I might not have a bank account. I may just use some type of a prepaid uh -huh. card uh -huh. for my expenditures and, and I load money onto prepaid That's cards. Right. So I don't know if anything in the mortgage rules have been changed for that or, or not. No, but, but cash can't be, can't, can't, cash can't be verified. I mean, it's, we have to have sourced funds for your down payment and closing costs. Now, in some of these programs, which we're going to go through, we've got a lot to cover. <laughs> the, the, the seller can pay your closing costs. And some of these programs are 100% financing, which is great for y'all. I mean, like if, if you had to pay something like an appraisal up front, which might be, you know, 350 to 450 fee, most people have that kind of cash on hand. That's a little different. That's reasonable cash, okay? Mm -hmm. But when you start talking five or $10,000, where'd you get that money? Oh, I got it in a, you know, under my mattress. That's not going to work. That won't work. But that is very, that's excellent. Because well, a lot of people, the, these young people starting out are not going to have. That's right. Well, mm -hmm. and the other part is they don't necessarily keep bank accounts any longer. Mm -hmm. I'm finding that in, in the banking world, they really keep prepaid type cards. Mm -hmm. So, And with that, they're not getting credit established either. That so we're going to talk about that too. Yeah. So if you recently lost your job uh, and you get another job, how long do you have to be on the job before you could qualify to try to buy one? That's a really good question. It would we we need to look at the history of, of the job that you had previous to see what kind of job you were on, how long you were there, and then are you going into the same type of field from the job that you had just left? So also we would need all investment accounts. We need two months on that. Uh, bring in your most recent full tax return, including W-2s or any 1099s. If you're self-employed, we would need two full years tax returns with all of your schedules. If you're divorced, you need to bring in your petition, parenting plan, and final recorded decree. We also need a copy of your driver's license, and if you have your Social Security card, a lot of people don't have their Social Security cards anymore, and we would, we would probably use like a W-2 to verify your Social Security number. Now, um, a lot of people, this is kind of what you were talking about, a lot of people have very limited credit. So there's other sources that we can use because maybe some things are not reported to the credit bureau. So things like anything that has a monthly premium that you pay, we would need like a 12-month history of that. Car insurance, sometimes you pay that monthly, quarterly. Uh, here's, here's what the young people are using right now, Netflix and Hulu, also cable, direct TV, dish. These are utility bills, things that we could go back and check to make sure you paid your bills on time. Cell phone bills, I said utility bills, rent, gym memberships, and Amazon Prime. Now, I, 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 this morning I was talking about we're really not going to send a doctor in to test your DNA or pull blood or anything, okay? Sometimes you're going to feel that way by the time we get finished with you. But let me just read this to you. The mortgage industry isn't always fun. Our investors seem nosy but we must be able to provide to them what they need and answer questions they will have. This is what the mortgage industry is all about, telling a complete story about where you have lived and worked for the past two years. It must be truthful, let's see here, from the start to the middle to the end. It must be truthful with no holes in the information provided because the underwriter is going to look for that good two-year history from everything from work, where you've lived, they want to see the whole picture. So here is a long list of the types of mortgage programs available. FHA loans is Federal Housing Administration, which is also known as HUD, Department of Housing and Urban Development. Your VA loan, United States Department of Veterans Affairs. Conventional loans is a mortgage that is not insured, such as by the government like government loans. These guidelines are set by Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. Your USDA Rural Development, or what we call RD loans, United States Department of Agriculture and Rural Development, and then we have in-house portfolio loans. 
These loans are bank loans that are not ser that are serviced by your bank, so they're not sold outside of the bank. And then I'm going to go into some of the guidelines for each program. So y'all raise your hands if you have questions and just stop me, okay? On your FHA loan, your guidelines are 3.5% down for a down payment. The seller can pay up to 6% of your closing cost and your prepaids. This has a HUD mortgage premium that FHA will allow you to finance. So you're, you're paying 3.5% down, but you're almost able to borrow back up to 100% by the time you add back in your HUD premium. And I'm going to talk about this insurance in just a second, what a HUD premium, MIP, and PMI is. You can finance these loans for up to 15 to 30 years. Your credit scores can be as low as 580, but most mortgage companies are going to want that to be 620 or higher. Monthly MIP is mortgage, is called mortgage insurance premium. The house does not need to be a fixer upper. Now, when I say fixer upper, you can make that house to your taste, like rip down wallpaper and things like that, but it doesn't need to be anything that has structural issues or half the roof missing or anything like that, okay? For these government programs, they're going to be pretty picky. This does require an escrow account for your taxes and insurance, so your, your, your principal interest taxes and insurance are all going to be added in with the monthly payment. So I said a minute ago, we were talking about mortgage insurance premium, MIP, which is on FHA loans, or your private mortgage insurance, which is called PMI on a conventional loan. This is insurance to protect the investor when you do not have your 20% down on your mortgage loan and in case you default on your mortgage payments. This premium is added to your monthly mortgage payment along with principal, interest, and taxes and insurance known as PITI. This is in no way to be confused with credit life insurance, which would pay off your mortgage in case of death. Okay, any questions on that? So, Sonia, what I see that, to, that that's important mm -hmm. to me at this point is that all of these costs that we've been talking about associated with the mortgage are really added into that mortgage monthly payment. Mm -hmm. So you mm -hmm. end up with one payment, that's right. one total cost that would come out of the monthly mm -hmm. income. That's right. Absolutely. And so that's, that's mm -hmm. more easy to understand. That's I right. Think. That's right. Everything's added in with your monthly payment. Your, your veterans, they can get a VA loan. It is 100%. Uh, they must have their certificate of eligibility to qualify for this. The credit scores on this program can go as low as 620. The veteran must still credit qualify. So even though he has a certificate of eligibility, his credit has to be credit worthy to qualify for this program. The house, again, does not need to be a fixer-upper because it is a government program. We can do 15 to 30 year fixed terms on this type of loan. The seller, again, can pay up to 6% of closing cost and prepaids. So you're really basically getting into the house for nothing. The seller can pay all your closing costs and there's 0% down. And Sonia, is it customary for the seller to pay the closing costs? <clears throat> do, do you see that more often? Um, for the seller, you can negotiate that in your contract. There's a way to negotiate that where the seller's going to get what he wants to, you know, what he has to clear for that purchase price. Um, I see it a lot, first, especially on first time home, yeah. home buyer purchases. I do. Agree. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they split it up or they just negotiate who will pay what. But yeah. Could be half, half of the uh -huh. closing costs. Uh -huh. so you mm -hmm. probably see that. I do. I do. Frequently. So, uh, if you have a realtor, you can negotiate, the realtor can negotiate that. Yes, ma'am. Now, is it closing costs? Is that something you do have to have up front? That is going to be at the end, but we do disclose that to you, what the closing costs will be up front. We disclose it to you up front. Yes, ma'am. But you will have that at the end. Yes, ma'am. Mm-hmm. At the end. So that can be paid out of pocket from you. And or it can be negotiated as a part of the sales agreement on, on the, mm -hmm. the property that you're purchasing and the seller could pay those closing mm -hmm. costs and or whatever that negotiation and that could be half the closing costs, mm -hmm. could be 100%. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they can pay up to 6% of the purchase price on this particular program and really the, the FHA, VA and RD loans. And that, that it's, it's amazing. It'll just about cover all your fees, which is what you really like to negotiate. Uh, let's see here. On this particular loan, there is a funding fee that can be financed. So it's, it's like your FHA loan. Uh, the veterans have something called, uh, well, it's a funding fee, and it's usually for first-time homebuyers, it's like 2.15%. So really, they're borrowing 
which is pretty amazing. But of course, the veterans, they deserve that. And I'm glad we have this program. Uh, it also requires an escrow account for your taxes and insurance. So your principal interest taxes and insurance, again, are going to be added into your monthly payment. Conventional loan, this is not a loan that's guaranteed by a government agency. Uh, it's not going to be as picky uh, with the house as far as uh, what your FHA, VA, and RD loans are. It still doesn't need a lot of major repairs, okay? Not major repairs, but they're not going to be near as picky. If you don't have your 20% to pay down, you're going to have your PMI, which is private mortgage insurance. Your credit scores uh, can be as low as 640 with some investors, but your, re your best rate's going to be at 720 or higher on this particular deal. And the terms can be anywhere from 10 to 30 years. Now here's the RD loan that I was looking for. <laughs> okay, this we do a lot of these. Um, this is 100% financing. It's for 30 years. It's going to be a fixed term. The seller again can pay up to 6% of your closing costs and your prepaids. And I'm going to break the closing costs and prepaids down for you in just a minute because I've, I've been talking about that a lot. Uh, this doesn't need to be a house that needs a lot of repairs. Your taxes and insurance are added into your monthly payment, so it does have an escrow, which makes it easy. This has a guarantee fee, which is like your funding fee or your HUD premium, and this can be added on top of your 100% financing. There is monthly mortgage insurance on this loan. This, this particular loan is an income-based program. It's going to be based on those who are living in the household that work. So it's, in, it's, it's an income-based program. Any questions on, on any of these so far? And then there's in-house portfolio loans. These loans are going to be serviced by your bank. They don't have to meet the same standards as the government-backed insured loans. The down payments vary, but from First Citizens, it's 15% down. We have several options available, terms such as three- and five-year arms, which are adjustable rates. They're not fixed, okay? Three- to five-year arms and amortized over a stretch of like 30 years. We also have a 5, 10, and 15 year fixed rate terms available at First Citizens. Uh, these types of loans fit the request for houses that may not meet the requirements on some of your government programs. And then again, there may be somebody that just wants a short term mortgage, and this would be something that we'd want to put them in. So what do credit scores have to do with my pre-qualification? Everything. Your credit scores is the most, in most programs have everything to do with whether you will qualify for a mortgage or not. So if you have zero credit scores, you don't have any credit scores, oh man, that's going to be tough. So we're going to talk a little bit about maybe how to get some scores here shortly. Depending on your credit scores, these will determine what program you will be approved for. Lower scores, such as 650 and under, borrowers may want to look at a government program such as FHA or even your RD. <clears throat> Higher scores, such as 720, you're usually going to get your best interest rate, and you're probably looking at something like maybe a conventional loan. Credit scores. Credit bureaus provide lenders with your credit scores based on your past and present bill habits. Credit scores are calculated based on the following factors. Your previous credit performance, your current debt balances, your newly opened trade lines such as open account, credit cards, installment notes, the length and age of your credit trade lines, and the type of debt that you owe. I'm sorry, that you open up. We use on the uh, secondary market side, which when I say secondary, that's going to be your FHA, VA, RD, conventional. We use the three major bureaus, which is Experian, TransUnion, and Equifax. So we're looking for three credit scores. We don't always get three scores, but we are looking for those three scores, and then we usually will use the middle score. If you have two borrowers, we're going to use the worst middle score between the two of you. So, Sonia, at this point, mm -hmm. you need a good realtor. Yeah, that uh, I, I mean, a, a, mm -hmm. a, so, so a realtor can help you to find a house that can qualify. Mm -hmm. uh, then you need a good banker, uh, mm -hmm. a, a, an expert. You need a in, really good banker. A really good banker, an expert in the mortgage, That's right. That's uh, which right. is Sonia. <laughs> uh, you need a good insurance agent at this point mm -hmm. because when you buy a house, okay. you're going to need insurance. That's right. And then your credit score is crucial mm -hmm. uh, to, to being able to, to secure credit. 
but earlier in the slides, there was a, there was a pattern of two. Mm -hmm. Two years employment, mm -hmm. two years bank statements. Mm -hmm. So the pattern of two it just kind of flowed through the requested information. Mm -hmm. it's, mm -hmm. it, it's a good memory tool to be mm -hmm. able to remember, I need two of whatever is where requested. Where you live, where you've worked, yeah. where you're in school. We have to cover a good two-year period there. The so, underwriters are going to want to know, the investors are going to want to know that. So that's a that's a good mm -hmm. recap of mm -hmm. what you've heard at, at this mm -hmm. point, mm -hmm. I think. And, and with the credit score being extremely <clears throat> important to the credit, uh, so much so that we talked at the lunchtime event and we thought that credit score, just talking about how to, to, to get a good credit score, develop a good credit score, and or maintain a credit score might just be an event that we might need to host as a smart mm -hmm. women program. So think about that as you're listening mm -hmm. through this information and you've got a survey <laughs> in, your, in your packet and if that is the case and you believe that would be a good program, then list that on the survey, please. Mm -hmm. If you build, you've got to have a construction loan first, okay? So then your permanent loan is going to be considered a refinance. But that's okay. I mean, we do, we, we, we do you know, build, build houses every day or help people build their dream homes every day. So if you've got a lot that's paid for, that's something that you might want to think about is building. Now, if you buy a house, um, you can negotiate your closing cost and everything, you know, if you, if you purchase a home. Whereas you're going to be paying for your fees if you, if you own your home and refinance it. But you can roll your fees into your loan. But you've got the land paid for, too. So. And I don't know how, if, if the land that you own is family land or if you've got heart ties to it, but another way in my mind as a banker is if I wanted to buy a home already built and I could negotiate closing costs and get in less expensive to me mm -hmm. as, a, mm -hmm. a, as a, a homeowner, I might want to sell my land mm -hmm. and use that for my down payment and my closing costs. Mm -hmm. So th there's options with a good mm -hmm. banker to talk it over with. Mm -hmm. So how do I fix my credit or improve it? Always pay your bills on time and at least the minimum payment that's due. Because if you don't pay the full payment, it's going to be reported and it's going to be reported late. So you're going to have, going to have slow credit or late, late credit and that's going to pull your credit scores down. Do not max out your credit cards because credit cards impact your scores by about 35%. Limit the number of credit cards you open and you are responsible for all joint accounts open with another individual such as checking accounts, loans, and credit cards. So if you co-sign or you're on a joint account with somebody and even a checking account, Judy, right? Mm -hmm. If that person mm -hmm. gets a lot of overdraft fees and it's charged off, just remember that you're responsible for that account too. And if you co-sign on a credit card or a loan and they don't make their payments, you're just as responsible as they are and that's gonna be reported to the credit bureau. So that can impact your credit scores. Um, Make sure that you pay your student loan payments on time as well because those are reported to the credit bureau. We see a lot of, of student debts that, I don't know if it's lack of communication with the student loan companies, but you know, I would advise you to stay in close contact with whoever your, your student, loan, student loans are with because they, they are notorious for reporting those late, whether it's you're trying to renew that or get them set up on payments, I would just stay in close contact with them because that really impacts your credit scores, okay? Assets and saving your money. Having a checking and savings account shows an effort of being frugal and thrifty with your hard-earned money. So underwriters are looking, you know, if they've been saving their money, what are they doing with all their money? They've got this really good job, where are they spending their money? Uh, it also shows you put funds back for unexpected expenses, it also shows your lender that you're making an effort to save funds toward buying a home, such as saving for a down payment or funds to go toward closing costs. And it also shows that you've got the discipline not to spend every dime you make on unneeded items. Owning a home also means having other responsibilities such as utilities and maintenance, which is the upkeep of your home. So most programs have a pretty strict uh, ratio, debt ratio to follow. Your government programs are typically going to be a 29% housing ratio and a 41% total debt ratio. And I'll, I'm going to go over that with you on, I think, the next slide. Conventional conforming programs are usually about 28% with a 41% back ratio is what bankers say. So let's see how we get that. 
How do I calculate my debt ratio? You're going to add all of your monthly payments together, such as monthly installments, credit card payments, student loan, child support, or alimony paid. And you're going to divide this by your gross monthly income. So here's a little, I type this up, just, I just added up here, your, like you have an automobile payment, your credit card, maybe a student loan payment, and you've got, you've got a lawnmower payment. So that's 625. Your gross monthly income, let's, I just used 3,500. So 3,500 times 41% equals 14.35. Minus your total debts, I don't have this little light on here, 625 equals 810, which is left for a house payment. Gross monthly income means taxes have not been That's right. taken out. That's right. So you gotta think about that. Because your, your Social Security and FICA and all that still gotta come out too. So. Okay, the mortgage crisis of 2008. I was around for that. I've been around a long time. <laughs> so I've seen lots of changes in the mortgage industry. Due to the mortgage crisis, the CFPB, Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, was created. Enforced was known as TRID, Telerespa Integrated Disclosure. This rocked the mortgage industry with all new forms and a new way of disclosing documents to customers. We all learned pretty quick this new rule was not going away. This new way of disclosing is all geared toward the consumer and making sure it is accurate information delivered. So there was so much going on way back in the day. Never did First Citizens do that. But there was a lot of companies that just was not giving accurate information. So it's all about the consumer and making sure they're getting the, the accurate numbers. So what are closing costs and prepaids? So your closing costs are going to be fees. I won't read all of these, but they're going to be attorney fees, appraisal fees, underwriting fees, uh, recording of your mortgage and your deed at the courthouse, uh, title search, and title insurance. Your prepaid items are going to be uh, your homeowner's insurance, setting up an escrow account for your taxes and insurance, and interest from the date of closing to the first of the month. You know, we were talking about having taxes and insurance. So you're going to select your homeowner's insurance, and then there's going to be property taxes. So you're going to divide that out by 12, and then that's going to be added, the 12, one twelfth of that will be added to your principal interest, and then one twelfth of the taxes and one twelfth of the insurance. Is that, was that good? <laughs> it is. Escrow. Escrow is an account that is held as a part of your mortgage payment, mm -hmm. and in that escrow account, it will... It will be funds that will pay your insurance, and it will pay your taxes, and, and it will pay that out on an annual basis. Mm -hmm. And that escrow account is, is held where your mortgage is mm -hmm. held. And so you're, you she don't have to, to worry good. about the responsibility of taxes and, and insurance mm -hmm. on your mortgage. You mm -hmm. just have to be concerned about making that one monthly payment, which includes the escrow, which is your amount for taxes and insurance. Does that explain it? Absolutely. You need to get up here. I'm going to give you the clicker. Well, I, I just you know just because really I'm job. simple, you know. Well, <laughs> what it does, it builds up over time. Yeah. And then they, the mortgage company pays it for you, Judy, which That's is what right. you said. Absolutely. You don't have to worry about that at the end of the year when your property taxes come due. Your mortgage company is going to pay it for you. That's so, right. I mean, it hit, you know, like your property taxes are usually due around Christmas time. That's pretty hard. Come up with all that money, at, you know, you're trying to buy for everybody, and then you got, oh man, I got to pay, you know, $750 worth of property taxes. Mm -hmm. And then homeowner's insurance is the same way. So the mortgage company, you know, as you're making these payments monthly, it goes into what we call an escrow account. It builds up, and then when your homeowner's comes due and when your taxes come due, they pay all that for you, and you don't have to worry about it. You, you don't worry have to worry about, about saving monthly, or anything. You worry yes. about a monthly payment. That's right. Mm -hmm. Good job, Judy Long, explaining that. All right, and that was a great question. So your loan estimate, and the bankers call it an LE. Uh, this document took the place of what we used to call a good faith estimate and the truth in lending. It's all combined now. The LE is, is a consolidation of both of these documents to give the consumer a true picture of what is expected with their mortgage. This is required to be delivered to you within three days of your mortgage application. This is going to cover a lot of information for you. It's a true picture of what's going on with your mortgage. The purchase price and address of the property, the terms of the loan, the product and loan type, your interest rate, is your rate locked or not, uh, what your loan amount is going to be, your monthly principal and interest, your escrow account we were talking about. 
uh, and then what your closing costs are. It's several items on that. And, and Sonia, this is a document that when you receive it, you read it, you understand it, and what you don't understand, you ask questions of the mortgage expert. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they can be very helpful in answering those questions so that you truly <laughs> understand at the time that you are, are, are making the decision to purchase that home and before signing those final closing documents, you know what you've just obligated yourself for. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's all, this, th these forms were designed to help the consumer understand everything going on with what they're doing with the mortgage. It also includes uh, your APR rate, and the TIP is something that came out a few years ago, which is a total interest percentage rate over the life of the loan. Uh, it's the total amount of interest that you will pay over the, lo the loan term as a percentage of your loan amount. This document also provides information about your appraisal being ordered, whether uh, your loan is gonna be assumable or not, what the late payment would be if you go over, you know, like 15 days, what that fee would be. Uh, and also if it's, you know, if you want to refinance it and who the servicing person is. Is it going to stay with like a First Citizens portfolio loan or is it going to be sold? A lot of our secondary market loans are sold. So this is what a, a loan estimate looks like. There's several pages to it. I know you can't see it. It's really fuzzy, but uh, this is what it's going to look like. It's going to break everything down line by line. And there's a third page. Of course, you're going to sign that you did receive this information. So this is the loan estimate, and then here is a closing disclosure. The closing disclosure actually looks a lot like what the loan estimate looks like. The fees are not going to vary very much at all. They're, they're not allowed to, okay, per the government. So the, the closing disclosure is going to be your final document that you're going to get, and that has to also be delivered three days before you close. No new debt during your mortgage process. This could, this is called, this would be, this could be a major problem from somebody that we'd pre-qualified you and all of a sudden you go out and you buy a new car, <laughs> you can't have a car payment. You may not qualify for the house anymore. So that's why we say no new debt during your mortgage loan process. This could cause you not to qualify for your home loan. Your debt ratio doesn't need to increase until, let's, let's get you closed first, okay? The underwriter may think that you are trying to hide something from them. Your job time. Every situation is different, but your job time, usually, let's see, job time in a 12-month history with your employer is crucial. Some loans require 24 months. Most loans are good with you graduating from college and going into the same field you went to school for, such as going into nursing, you've been in nursing school, and then all of a sudden you're getting a job at the hospital, you're going into your field. You need to check with your lender and the program that you're going to, you know, be, be qualified for about your job. These are some comments from our department that I thought would be really good to pass on to you all. It, it's just really good information from all of us. If the loan officer or processor asks for it, they really need the information because we, we, we hate to bother you about things that we need for your file, but, but if we ask you for it, we really truly need it. It's something that the underwriter is probably going to need to, to approve your loan. Sometimes when you provide items such as bank statements, question arise. Um, when you give us your bank statements, there may be a, a big ACH or a, some kind of a debit on there, you know, that they may think that uh, we have to prove to the underwriter that you don't have a new loan outstanding. And then there may be a real large deposit on there. And uh, the underwriter is also going to want to make sure that you haven't gone out and borrowed money and not disclosed that. So all of a sudden you have this lump sum of a deposit in your, in your bank account. They want to know where the money's come from. Remember, they're very nosy. <laughs> um, we always need to know where your funds have come from. I just talked about that. So we need evidence by a receipt or a copy of the transaction. Don't close out your credit cards, only pay down to zero, as closing them out will greatly impact your credit scores. We had that conversation this morning about somebody closing something, paying something off, and their credit scores dropped, and it's, it's backwards of how you think it should be, but it really impacts your, your credit scores. They actually, at lunch, uh, paid off debt <clears throat> thinking that that was the right thing to do in order to afford the mortgage. Mm -hmm. They paid off a car, I think, and they had paid off a credit card. Well, then that affected their credit score, mm -hmm. and their credit score dropped, dropped, and it affected the fact of them being qualified for the mortgage. Mm -hmm. So before you do anything, make those types of decisions, 
you need to see your mortgage expert and understand what you mm -hmm. should or should not do in terms of debt. Mm -hmm. And they can give you the right advice mm -hmm. as to what to pay down or what not to pay down. That's right. So, Sometimes when you, uh, we've even paid some things off at closing for that person. Like if, it, if they need to qualify with paying off a credit card or a car payment, it, we, we just collect that at closing and pay it for them so that the credit scores don't drop and their whole status won't change. Before you dispute an item on your credit report, talk to your lender. Sometimes it's, we've had investors that don't like to buy our mortgages because there's a dispute on the credit report. So just talk to us about that before you do that. And we make it easy for you. You can apply right here online, firstcnb.com. I think we're getting close to the end here. So let's, let's review. Getting pre-qualified is the first step. Job time and credit scores are crucial when applying for a mortgage loan, maintaining a budget and saving your money shows responsibility. The loan estimate and closing disclosure is for your review for accurate numbers. Every situation is different. When you go on the secondary market side, they're going to want this information to your history. It doesn't matter. They got to they have all this information. Now, when you're dealing with a portfolio loan, it's an in-house loan, and you're a, you're a customer, we're a community bank, you're a customer for citizens, we're, we're liable to be a little bit more lenient on something like that. We can work with you on that. You're a bank customer. You've been banking with us for a long time. It, it's just a different situation than what the government is going to require of us. So these 30-year these fixed uh, programs, you got to have everything about you just about, except really not drawing blood, no DNA. They don't, they don't require that yet. I was just going to share with you all, we, do, we apply for grant funds every year. Uh, and we usually will apply for this sometime around the first of the year. Um, this is really good for first-time home buyers because you can get up to five thousand uh, dollars. This past year, they just came out with the seventy-five hundred dollars for veterans. I actually had a, a loan that I closed and was able to help a veteran. Um, but the five thousand dollars can go for a down payment, like your three and a half percent on FHA loan, or it can go toward closing costs if the seller doesn't help you with your closing fees and prepaids. Uh, you need to have a $500 contribution. You will have to attend some uh, home, buy, home buyer counseling. As long as you live in the house for five years, there's a fifth of that forgiven over that five-year period of time. But this is just good. To, we'll, be, we'll be announcing this and promoting this sometime after the first of the year. I just wanted to share about our grant funds. And I think that that is it. Sonia, thank you. And... Again, Catherine, thank you, and to our marketing division who puts these programs together. Um, we appreciate them spending the extra hours uh, that they do in planning all these events. We wouldn't be possible without our marketing division. And thank each of you for coming. Please go tell a family member or a friend. Uh, tell them about the Smart Women program. Tell them about our website, about our blog and visit that website and remember the Smart Kids program as well. Uh, education for, for, for your family members starting from the sixth grade up so they can begin to learn to save early and learn more about financial education as they mature in life and they'll be ready to buy that first home and go to college and understand student loan debt maybe better than we have uh, within our, our lifetimes. So thank you all, we appreciate it.